Hello, my name is John and today we'll be reading Democrats want to turn America into Russia using KGB tactics to solve this constitutional crisis by Dan F Daniel Greenfield on Front Page Magazine posted February 8th, 2018. Daniel Greenfield is a New York writer focusing on radical Islam. The Democrats have a bold plan for fighting Russia. Accuse re Republicans of treason, eavesdrop on their conversations, and send them to jail. Overturn the outcome of a free election because that has been tampered with by foreign interests. Demand that tech companies censor dissenting media outlets spreading fake news to protect democracy. Good work, comrades. The bold plan is to fight Russia by becoming Russian. State surveillance, endless investigations, and locking up political opponents under the guise of fighting foreign influences is how Vladimir Putin does business. It's how they do it in Turkey, Venezuela, and Iran. But these days, it's how the Dems do it. Totalitarian states aren't really fighting foreign influences. They're suppressing domestic opponents. The Democrats, who were for appeasing Russia before they were against it, are doing the same thing. The same gang of commissars, czars, and apparatchiks that giggled when Obama wrote off Romney's warning with the 80s called and wants their foreign policy back now sees Russians under every sofa. Hollywood, which still weeps for the industry's victims of McCarthyism, launched a committee to investigate Russia by Rob Meathead Reiner and Morgan Freeman. After several months of trying, the committee members have finally found Russia on a map and are ready to reveal their findings on CNN. Do any of these people actually care about Russia? What have they done to check Putin's geopolitical ambitions? What do they plan to do about the Ukraine or Georgia? Nothing. Their administration dismantled missile defense and gave Moscow everything it wanted. If the Dems get back into the White House, they'll do it all over again with even more uranium on top. And CNN and the Washington Post will go back to claiming that weakness is really a strength. Their only answer now is to mumble about sanctions. Sanctions were a favorite tool of the Obama administration because they were a mostly worthless excuse to do nothing. There was never any fallback plan for what to do if sanctions failed. And when they did fail, there was no plan B. All the CNN hawks and Democrats who suddenly care about Russia still have no post-sanctions plan. They have a plan to get Trump out of the White House. They have no proposals for Putin or Russia. The leftists who can't stop Russianizing all over the place don't want to fight Russia. They're using it as a pretext to go after other Americans. The Committee to Investigate Russia and the rest of it is a shoddy pretext to lock up Republicans by a political movement that has been appeasing Russia since the 1930s. After almost a century of appeasement, the doves have suddenly turned into bellicose hawks, and they're eager to do anything to stop Russia, except, of course, build up our military. But they will fight Putin to the last Republican, and they'll go on fighting until they win another election, and freedom dies for good. If you believe them, Russia's Facebook posts pose a greater threat to democracy than the entire communist movement did during the Cold War. And the Russian bots are a more dangerous weapon than the nuclear bomb. The ideological movement that protests 
the execution of the Rosenberg atom bomb traders would like to send everybody who ever spoke to a Russian to prison for 20 years. Locking up people for meeting with foreigners was the sort of thing they did back in the Soviet Union. No mainstream political figure during the Cold War spoke seriously of removing the President of the United States from office. The one member of Congress who we know spied for Russia, a Democrat, retired comfortably in the bosom of his party's political machine. Senator Ted Kennedy, who sent a collusion letter to Moscow to prepare for his presidential bid, never suffered any consequences. His great-nephew even delivered the Democratic response, accusing Russia of being knee-deep in our democracy. But it's the Democrats that are knee-deep in tyranny. The same political movement that believes one of history's greatest outrages was a, that a handful of Hollywood hacks had trouble getting work for a few years because they were communists, would like to remove the president of the United States because his son once talked to a Russian. The anti-communists were trying to save us from communism. What is Hollywood's new McCarthyism trying to save us from? What ideology are they fighting? And what terrible evil are they resisting? That's when they mumble something about interference in our elections and then go back to studying diagrams of Trump's hotels in Kyrgyzstan or Omaha. The interference consisted of $100,000 worth of Facebook ads and some hacked DNC emails. Or they call it in Chicago Wednesday. It was never about Russia. Shouting treason isn't how you fight foreigners. It's how you delegitimatize your political opponents. Sometimes they might be illegitimate trailer traitors, but most of the time the traitor shouters just want an excuse for getting rid of their political opponents. Domestic politics has limits. War doesn't. If your opponents are traitors, you can spy on them, entrap them, and imprison them. You can overturn elections, censor the press, and take any measures you need to defend against a foreign threat. And that's exactly what the born-again communist patriots of the left are doing. To save us from $100,000 in Facebook ads and their own hacked DNC emails, they had to eavesdrop on Trump officials, bring them up on charges, and run an endless investigation of the President of the United States. Obama and Clinton supporters in the IRS, state, the FBI, the DOG, and the NSA broke a few rules, but they were protecting us from the Russian menace lurking in Trump Tower. Just ask Putin. It's how he does it. It's how every dictatorship does it. Waterboarding the master mind of 9-11 is not who we are as Americans. So said the politician whose regime spied on members of Congress, pro-Israel activists, reporters, and the Trump team. But Muslim terrorists didn't represent a grave threat to Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Republicans did. To Obama, ISIS was just a JV team. The worst it could do is kill a few thousand Americans and a few, few million Middle Easterners. The left's real enemies are the ones that threaten its policy agenda. The definition of treason is one important difference between a free country and a totalitarian state. Treason in a free country is a threat to the nation. In a totalitarian state, it's a threat to the ruling class. The tighter the tyranny, the narrower that definition of treason becomes until it's reduced to one man. The American left rejected the presidential victories of George W. Bush and Donald Trump. 
It treats Congress and the Supreme Court as illegitimate institutions because it doesn't control them. Legitimate government in its eyes doesn't derive its authority from the consent of the governed, but from its ideology. Any elected officials who don't believe in global warming, open borders, freeing criminals, socialized medicine, and appeasing terrorists are traitors against the authority of the left. The tyrants accuse their enemies of treason to the nation when what they're really charging them with is treason against their politics. It is the enemies of tyranny who are true patriots, while the tyrants are the traitors. And so the tyrants have to portray the patriots as a foreign threat. The average lefty stopped caring about Russia once it stopped being the motherland of socialism. You couldn't get Bernie Sanders to honeymoon there again if you offered him his choice of Stachovanite brand underarm deodorant and ice in icy gulag or spicy radioactive varieties. Russia in America now serves the same function as America in Russia. It's a cautious belly for delegitimizing the supporters of a free society as cat's paws of foreign interests who must be suppressed. Like 1984's Oceania, Eurasia, and East Asia, leftist interlinked tyrannies collaborate even when they pretend to fight each other as a pretext for repressing their own populations. Or as Obama once told Russia's Medvedev, this is my last election. After my election, I will have more flexibility. The left would like this to be the last election so its leaders can have maximum flexibility not to fight Russia, but to fight America. The political movement that once took its marching orders from Moscow doesn't want to stop Russia. It wants to pretend that it's a political reign of terror, the illegal eavesdropping, the investigations, the censorship, the sudden raids against its political opponents, and the rest of the KGB tactics are a necessary evil in the face of a constitutional crisis. There is a constitutional crisis, and it isn't Russian bots. It's the left. When leftists who don't believe in the Constitution speak about a constitutional crisis, what they really mean is that we need to suspend the Constitution to deal with this emergency. Obama's illegal KGB tactics of surveillance and investigations have already bypassed the most basic constitutional norms. Now the Democrats are signaling that they'll have to suspend all of it to deal with this crisis. The left doesn't want to fight Russia. It wants to turn America into Russia. This video is a production of the School of the White Crane. My name is John Brooker, and you can communicate with me through commentary on this video or through my Gmail listed here. Please share this video with family and friends and on social media. May God richly bless you.